Thanks for joining me here on the All Stars Cars channel. I'm Glenn and today's fun project we've got a Nissan Maxima with a starter problem. Not a problem starting but the actual starter itself. Uh, it had a slow crank and a kind of a unusual sounding crank. Sometimes it would fire right up, sometimes it was a long crank on there. You can actually hear the starter grinding or groaning and I'm going to let you guys hear that and or see that in just a second. But anyhow, uh, the, the issue here wasn't the battery. That's the first thing, you know, check the battery, make sure it's fully charged, and it was. So today's video, I'm gonna show you how to uh, swap that starter out on a fourth gen Maxima. Why don't we get down to the car and check it out. Let me start it a couple of times. Maybe we can hear the Bendix getting hung up. It's kind of like a winding sound after it starts. Sometimes it's kind of sounds like a slow crank, and uh, we'll see what happens this time. So let me get in there. Fire this bad boy up. There we go. You hear how it didn't catch right there? So you kind of heard it grabbed and not grabbed. It's weak. The starter's definitely weak. Our first step, Ryan, is we're going to remove the battery because we uh, have to disable that. We don't want to touch the starter cables with anything hot. So go ahead and take off that negative side terminal. That's where we're gonna start, loosen that up. And then uh, we'll get the positive side off and we can get to the, to the next step. Very good, push that down in here. You wanna tuck that out of the way. You don't want this to accidentally pop up and hit that. Same thing, you want to tuck it out of the way, okay? So that's good, so now we can get the uh, strap here to tie down. We want to get a deep 10 millimeter. Yeah, you could use that, but let's get a deep 10 millimeter socket. Get it to the top, there we go, get the other one. Now these, these have like hooks down in the bottom here. Sometimes you have to take them all the way out. This one you're gonna to have to take, well, there it is, I got it. So I just twisted it, and then you get this back one out. Go ahead. You got it? Man, you're, you're like, uh, you can see in the night, I guess. Don't, you don't need to pull it through. There's no reason to. Don't, should, don't cross the terminals, though. <laughs> don't touch this to that. All right, very good. Or we're going to have fireworks. Then you want to take all your, your stuff that you take off, hand it to me. We keep it all in a nice, neat spot. The battery comes straight up. Straight up and over without hitting any of the fenders or anything else. You want to be careful. Put the battery over there by the front, by the, you know, down this side on this side of the car. Out of our way. Very good. The next step, we want to remove the air filter, and which is in here, the housing, which th connects to the mass airflow sensor right here. So there's a tab back here, and what we want to do is just push down on that and pull this connector off so that's disengaged. Then we want to remove these hoses here. There's some lines. You just squeeze the clamp and then twist these off. Sometimes they're a little stiff, so you may have to uh, wiggle and twist as you pull. We'll get this one off. There it goes. And the light just went flying. There's another one over here. Get that off. Sorry if my hand's in the way. Hopefully. You can see, there we go, so that one's off. And then there's a small, small hose here. Just be careful. And if you break one of these hoses, make sure you replace it. Ouch, that hurt. And then there are four clips right here. You can see one's here. I'm gonna snap this one back. There's one here, and there's one over here. And then back here, if you can see it on film, I'm gonna point to it. There's one right here. It's a little tricky to get to. Pop that out. Now this, can easily come up there's our air filter but what we want to do is remove the intake boot right here to to the uh, throttle body so that takes a you could use a flat head or look at this I just discovered this one's loose that is not good so uh, if yours is loose make sure it's tight so that's going to allow air to get into the engine uh, past the mass airflow sensor and that would definitely cause a problem so I'm kind of glad we found that anyway with that loose normally you would loosen this clamp up 
you can twist and pull this up. And I think there's one more, there's like a harness on this side, right back here. You're gonna have to come over here, I don't think you can see it. But right here is a little clip. You take your cat's paw, can you hand me that cat's paw right there? Inside the tool. Yep. Take like a little, or a screwdriver if you want. You get right in here, hold that, hold that, just hold that steady right there. Twist this sucker out if you can. I'm trying to do it one-handed, there we go. And now, go ahead over there and we'll get the whole thing coming out. Nice and steady. And that's that. So this is the mass airflow sensor. You see the honeycomb, the screen right there. Your mass airflow is right back past it. So if you need to clean it, that's a good time to do it. Never hurts. And here's our filter. So here's our uh, box. We're gonna have to remove the air box, which has this tubing right here. We're gonna get this out of our way because right down in here is where our starter is. So our starter lives right here. There's two bolts holding it in, and I'll show you that in a second. We'll remove our cables, but before we do anything more with the air box, right here's another clip. I believe this is the air uh, temperature sensor, and we're gonna disconnect that. So push that off to the side. So we're about to remove the air box, and what I wanna do is take some compressed air and just get this loose stuff out of here. We definitely don't want it going into the intake. In fact, Ryan, put your hand over the top of that intake right there. No, over the intake. There you go, throttle body, I'm sorry. And uh, the, that's the intake. And let's get this out of here. Close your eyes, put your safety squints on. So after removing all that dirt and stuff, make sure you do cover that throttle body. You don't want any crap in there. Let's zip these out. There's three bolts down in here. Um, this one bolt down in here, I don't think you guys can see it. There's one right in here. These two are easy to grab. Uh, let's see, if, I can't, if you can't reach that one, take a, long, a pair of long needle nose and just reach down in there. Yank this out here like that. That's those three. And now your box should come right on out. And we'll get to the next step. Look, there's a little, there's a little guy living down here, right? Look, it's the okay, guy. See? Look at that. He's cute. So the next step is to get the air intake tube out of our way because that's our starter right down there and this thing is here bothering us. So we gotta remove it. It's really easy. Uh, we've got a sensor up here. I believe this is the uh, manifold absolute pressure sensor, map sensor. There's one bolt, there's two bolts here. You just need to remove this one, which is the bracket to this plastic housing. And then there's two pins right here that we need to remove. This one is factory and Ryan will take that out in just a second. And then this one has been put in aftermarket, but they come out just as easy. Let me, uh, yes, why don't you start with that sensor? Get that out, just take that back out, don't lose it. So that's at least push that off to the side, right? And then we'll get these pins out, start with that one. So you use a Phillips and a small flathead and gently pull up on that screw and once you get the screw out, the clip comes out or the pin comes out really easy. There you go. And this one, you just pop the tab. There's two little, show the indentations right there. There's one there and one on the other side, right? You just get a screwdriver in there, gently lift up on that. Sometimes you go to both sides. And once that pin, watch, watch your finger so you can see what's going on. Nope, oh, nobody could see what happened. All right. Well, next time we'll do it. Anyway, you pull up on that pin and then the clip comes out. Now, this should start getting pretty loose on you, and there's a connector, or I don't know if you call it a connector, but there's a housing here where this whole thing is being held in. So I'm gonna push in with a screwdriver right here. There's a slot, and I'll show you that in a second. So right here is the slot, and all I did was push this tab in, and we got this up and out of the way. Now, we're getting much closer to where our starter is. Here's where our uh, cable comes in. This is hot all the time. I did do a voltage drop test and I have other videos. I'll link that in the uh, description as, have, as far as how to test this. But I had full 12.7 volts here uh, coming from the cable through here. 
so I know I didn't have any uh, corrosion or a bad connection or anything like that. And we've got our trigger wire. I'll show you all that in a second. What we need to do now is there's a connector here. We need to get this released out of our way and then get up in there for those two bolts. We'll probably move this harness a little bit and uh, get to the next step. So in order to get the starter out, we're gonna have to remove these terminals. Now this is your hot terminal, which goes directly to the battery positive. And I had tested all this with a voltage drop test earlier. If you need to know how to do that, I did it on an F-150 and I'll link the video in the description. But anyhow, um, you wanna remove this 12 millimeter nut. That terminal will come off. This wire right here is our trigger wire, it's called. So when you turn the key, you know, in the ignition in the car, you turn it, it will send the signal, some people call it a signal wire, and that will energize this solenoid, which will send, you know, power to the motor, the Bendix will come out, go into the flex plate, spin, and then retract when you, you know, obviously you let off the key, it should all come on back. So anyway, what we need to do is just remove this 12 millimeter nut right here, get this terminal off, and I'm gonna show you um, when you do this, what it'll do is, and I'm doing this one-handed here, trying to wiggle this on. It's kind of tight, snug. But once you get that terminal loose, which I can't do right now, I'll show you in a second, you've got this bracket right here that attaches all these wires, these connectors, to the engine mount or transmission mount right here. So that I've already got this one pulled out. There's a small little uh, 10 millimeter or eight millimeter bolt right in here, it's kind of tough to get, get out, but you'll pull this out, get this loose like this. All right, I got Ryan working on that 12 millimeter nut. Since he's younger, he's got more energy than me. He can get it, now nah, you're gonna have to keep cranking, it's, it's tight. You're gonna have to crank it all, it's one of those that you gotta work it all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, got that nut loose now. Mm -hmm. So you get that washer. You need the pliers to grab it or no, you good? I got it. Just gotta move this thing out of the way. Just pull on the terminal towards you and it'll slide off and you grab it with your hands. So with the nut out of the way, you know, we got this terminal loose or this connector loose now, this, this uh, wire. And what you can do is get to the trigger wire I mentioned earlier, which is into this bracket. So what you do is you flip this over and you see this little white doohickey sticking out. All we're gonna do is squeeze that. If you could hold this, Ryan, right there, that'd be good. And what you do is just squeeze this like this and then push it through and it should release that connector. How much it's gonna fight you, you never know. But let me see, there we go, it's almost through now. There it is. All right, and then you, what you can do is release this. That's this gray one. And then you squeeze down. Let's see, how's this one release? Push down here. I'm trying to get out of my, get out of your way, but yeah, don't move too much. But right here, okay. Squeeze down and pull. And this is our trigger, okay. So to test this, what you can do is actually the battery has to be in, but you can take your test light, poke it in here, go the other end of your test light to ground, and when you turn the trigger, obviously the, the starter won't turn, it won't start, but you should see it light up. So that's how you know that this is good. We know it's good because the starter was still cranking. We didn't have a, a totally dead starter. With the starter cable out of our way, you know, we have clear access to get to the two bolts that hold this starter in. And I want to show you where they are. So one is right back in here. This is a shorty. This one's a 14 millimeter. And then down over here is a 17 millimeter. Now this one's like five inches long. It's a pretty long bolt. They're gonna be very tight if they're, if they're original, and this car is, to break loose. So we'll get an extension out here, like maybe a six inch, get a uh, socket on there with a ratchet, break that free, get this one out, this 14, and then the whole starter should be ready to extract. I have a 17 millimeter socket on there with, the three, with a six inch extension on three eighths, and I've got a big breaker bar, and I'm putting a lot of pressure on it, and it's not budging. We're gonna have to go to half inch drive. So I have a 17 millimeter socket on a half inch drive because the 3 8 just wasn't cutting it with a half inch, uh, six inch extension. And uh, let's give this a shot here. Hopefully this will break it free. There it goes, maybe. 
It's tight, man. Oh, Jesus. It's freaking tight. I got a half inch impact with a swivel 17 on there and see if we can zip this out with that. Okay. Thankfully, that came out fairly easy because I tried doing it by hand, as you saw, or may have seen, if I put it in the video, and it was brutally tight. So this gun right here, this is the, uh, what is this bad boy? The two 899, the DCF 899, this sucker is strong. Here's that bolt right here. There's no corrosion, it's just torqued really tight. So now that's out, and I'm gonna get a 14 and zip that 14 out now. All right, so with the 17 out now, I'm gonna grab this 14 and get it. Oops, sorry if the light just blinded you, but I'm trying to see what I'm doing. Here we go. Oh, come on, there it is. Okay, and we'll zip this out. Very good, and I just saw the starter drop. This one is short, much shorter. It's only about an inch and a quarter long. Now I can get in here with the two bolts out and should be able to yank this starter out. So this is what we came for right here. And we can take this over to the bench and play with it now, but here's that Bendix right here. And I think this thing is like getting hung up. We're over here on the bench. What I did was I've got a uh, auxiliary power 12 volt. I've got another battery sitting there on the ground with some jumper cables. I hooked the negative up to the uh, tab right here where it bolts to the engine. That's your ground. The hot side, the battery positive, is going to that terminal where we remove the... Oops. Hey, a little fireworks action. When you jump the solenoid and these are hot, you can actually get this to start by touching both terminals, this and this, without this trigger wire here. But I'll show you that so you, you know if you want to touch both, you fire it up that way, do some welding, or just hook to the positive terminal side. Here's our trigger wire. And all you need to do is, you know, I'm plugged in right here. So this would be from the ignition. Now this actual clamp, or, or uh, yeah, it's a clamp, has a spot right here. I'm gonna touch this. Can you get that on film here where you can see this? Come in this way so you can, they, they can see. Can you see that? Yeah. Right, so right in here. So when I touch that, this'll, this'll, there we go, without all the fireworks show. So what I, we noticed here on the bench when I run this, I don't know if you're picking it up on the on the uh, or the microphone's picking it up, but it's kind of like grindy sounding. Let me let you hear it. Woo! So when I, so when I let off, when I when I let off, when I release the trigger wire, you can kind of hear that grinding sound. Let's try that again without the fireworks. It's very rough sounding, making that kind of sound. This thing is uh, weak. I didn't do an amperage test. You could check the amperage to see how much amperage this is putting out, but it's not under load sitting here on the bench. So it could actually bench test good. Now that noise is not normal, but the, as far as the amperage, uh, not under load, not under stress. So the new one will sound much smoother. All right, so we got our new starter, part number 17713SN, and it's right here on the bench. This is a new starter. And it comes with a uh, certificate, so hopefully it is what it is here, if you know what I mean. So we're set up the same way. I don't know if it'll pick up on camera, but I'm going to jump this one, and we'll listen. It should be smoother. As you notice, I also have my hand on here so this thing doesn't jump around, but I'm feeling for, like, excessive vibration or anything like that. So let me hit this. And it's much smoother, okay? I'm not hearing that kind of grinding noise. So everything looks the same when you get a new starter. You want to match your parts up, you know, make sure they look the same as far as fitting. Maybe a little different, but everything looks good here. The Bendix has the right amount of teeth on it right here as opposed to the original. And uh, let's put this in and get to the next step. All right, so let's take our new starter and we'll get our bolt started. I'm going to start with the, uh, the small bolt and squeeze it down in here. Hopefully you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Let me get a little more light. How's that work? Is that better? Ryan? Yep. Okay. And there are no shims on these Nissans. Some of them will have a shim between the uh, starter and the, the block or transmission housing, whatever this is bolted to. 
Um, we don't have that in this case, so don't worry about the shims. And then once I get these hand started, we don't wanna th cross thread, then I will get my socket on there and we can tighten this up, snug it down and hook up the wiring. I'm just gonna get these good and snug, the 14's tight. And then, I don't know what the exact torque specs are, but if you want those, you can look them up. I'm gonna make them uh, one hand, or two hand dug, ugga duggas, is what I'm gonna do. Okay, that's good, it's going nowhere. And we'll hook up our wires now. So what I wanna do now is transfer this little clip for our uh, trigger wire here, signal wire. From the old from the original starter i should say that just slips right in here like that that's the part we push through the bracket down here so that's on and what we can do is actually right now is the easiest to go ahead and and hook this up right here so you can't mess it up it only goes on one way basically and click that in tight so that we have a good connection right there and that should be good and then what we'll do is right back in here. I don't know if you'll be able to see me, but we'll put it back in place. So make sure that's, I'm gonna pull on this connector. I wanna verify that it really clipped in because we don't need a dead spot. We have to take all this off to get to it again. So let's make sure. Yeah, it's good and tight, okay. All right, so with that in, let's plug this in here through the bottom. See it pushing through here? Can you guys see that? Right there, see it snapped in. That's in place in our bracket. Now we can get our terminal hooked up, but what I wanna do first is, and you see this corrosion in here, so we're gonna take a little piece of sandpaper, and we wanna kinda of clean this brass up, or copper, or whatever this is. I'll show you in a second. We want it nice and shiny, so that when it sits against the terminal post right there, we have good, uh, a good connection. We'll do that. Okay. So that's all set. We can go ahead and screw this on. Now this is a little tricky because this rubber boot is kind of in the way. So what I want to do is slip my lock washer which you probably can't see what I'm doing, but I'll show you in a second. There's a lock washer right there, and now I'll get the nut on. They have the boot here. The rubber boot is there because this is hot. Once this is hooked to the battery, this is hot all the time. And if you touch something from this terminal to ground, well, you're gonna have a fireworks show, and we don't need any fireworks. So I got it started, and now I'll take my 12 millimeter wrench, it's gonna take me a little bit of time. I won't bore you with it. And I'm gonna go ahead and screw this on tight, get it snug. I'm not gonna go ballistic on it. And uh, we'll get to the next step. Okay, so the new starter is in. Our main terminal is hooked up here, our cable, battery cable. We have our trigger wire signal is hooked up. Everything's torqued down. Now what I did do over here, you see these three connectors? They're on a bracket. I kind of bent that a little bit forward just so that I could get my extension in on that 17 bolt down there. Just made it a little bit easier because that one is very tight. But anyhow, uh, what we need to do now is just put everything back opposite of removal. Next step, once that's all in, we'll fire the car up. All right, Ryan, you ready? Yep. Maintenance test here, Ryan just got in the car. We got everything back together. So now, you know, the car should, or the engine should start right away. We shouldn't hear any abnormal noises, screeching, squealing. Um, what I'd like you to do is just go ahead and start it. Wait like 10, 15 seconds, you know, shut it off. Let it settle for a second, start it back up. We'll do it a couple times and listen to it and it should sound better. Hopefully, go ahead. Good, shut it. Go ahead and start it. Nice. Go ahead and shut it. You go ahead and start. You don't have to hold the starter on that long, you know, just till it starts. Good. Very good. Fixed. Mm -hmm. Put your hat up a little bit, please. Let me you see your face, your handsome face, okay. 
Okay. <laughs> you know me laughing. All right, we're so excited that that job's done, right? Got the old starter out, got the new one in, Ryan. Thanks for all your help. He, he did most of the work. I'm just uh, acting like I'm sweating here. Anyway, uh, the car's all fixed. It sounds much better, starts right up. Don't forget, if you're bench testing your starter, it's not under load. So when it's in the car under load, under stress there, it's going to act a little differently than it will on the bench. But we could definitely hear that uh, rough sound as opposed to the new one. So hopefully that new one lasts us a while, right? Yeah. So anyway, it's his car. He's back on the road. He can go cruising, enjoy riding, and all that other fun stuff. So thanks for stopping by the channel. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them right there down below. Get a chance, smash that like button. We appreciate that. And we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy. So Ryan probably went off to uh, the beach or wherever he went to go have fun. Where 17 year olds go, let's put it that way. Anyway, I'm gonna do a little bonus footage. I figure, let me uh, take this apart. These come apart usually pretty easy. And there's two like eight millimeters of bolts back here. And let's take it apart. Let's see if we see anything obvious. I see a lot of black crud. I don't know if you can see it. Something, looks like maybe the brushes, the brush material. So let me pull this apart, get it on camera here, and wiggle these out. Now I didn't release this terminal back here yet, the wire probably should have, but let's pull this apart and see what we got. We got a bunch of black powder, a bunch of goo here. So it's probably in the, here's the windings here in this motor. It's probably the uh, brushes down in there. Let me take that apart. Let's see what's going on here. Sometimes you can re-grease these things, clean them up and grease them, but uh, in this case, I'm not worried about it. Pop this out. Oops, there's our gears. Oh yeah, the planetary. See the planetary gears? They're, they're okay in here, but they're all dry. This should all be greased up. This is really dry. And you can't blame it for being, what, like 23 years old and stuff. So you could clean all this up, take it apart. I think I'll take this, these screws out and see how those brushes look. Take these two screws out back here. Usually they, they can be kind of real tight, so this one's not bad. All right, let's pull this apart on camera and see how crazy this can get. So let me get this out of the way. Ooh, stuff's messy. See all this black goo. Let's see, let me wiggle this apart. Oh boy, let me get a hammer and tap it. Get a hammer and tap this. There's all kinds of black powder coming out. There it goes. Okay. Pull this straight out. Wow, it's full of dust. Look at this. It's it's the uh, the brushes are shot. I can see them down in here. You guys probably can't see it on camera, but I'll point to it in a second. Just look at inside here. I'm gonna dump it out. So that's all brush material. Oop. Can see it. So that's what's going on here. This this thing's got some old age. We could pull this out here. Ooh boy, more dust. Oh yeah. It's a disaster in there. Technically we might be able to clean this all up, but oh I see a piece of metal loose here. There's a chunk of metal. Oh, this boy's worn out. Okay, here's what happened. Here was the failure. So on the stator here, I have, I don't know if you can see this, big chunks of metal come out. And as I rotate this, it's real rough. So here's our brushes down in here. There's a bunch of them, they're, they're right in here. And these are all worn out. What do we got? One, two, three, four brushes. So this thing would, you know, needs a rebuild. And to do that, you just pull this out. You probably could get a kit, it's not worth it. So when I just put the, armature here into the planetary gear which is very dry should be greased up hear that 
because I spin this. There's a bearing or something back in here that's bad. I mean, we made the right call. This thing's junk. See, if I spin it at one point, it's quiet. And then you get to the other point, you start hearing the grinding. 